What is going on, YouTube people? New York Cards and Comics here. Boy, rough times in the streets for our old pals, Panini. This news came out yesterday afternoon. Uh, this has been floating around for a while now. Uh, if you were not aware, Panini was getting sued for copyright infringement, basically, on the old school Stat Smashers card from Wildcard. Now, for those that may or may not know, Wildcard actually went out of business a long time ago. This is the people handling the bankruptcy because they still owe money to people. Most notably, I believe this site's the NFLPA, which is an interesting twist because the NFLPA basically just told Panini to go jump in a lake, and now they have to cut a huge check for the settlement of the Stat Smashers copyright infringement. And from what I understand, based off the Sports Collector Daily article and a few other places that I've poked around, it sounds like a bulk of that money is going to the NFLPA. So, rough times for good old Panini. Uh, if you are not familiar with this, this is, I mean, they settled this before it went to trial, and I can see why. Uh, on the left here, you see the copyrighted Stat Smashers card. Uh, from back in the day. This is a Barry Sanders. You can see the wild card logo there. So that is what they locked down. On the right, you see what Panini put out in 2020 with their version of a Barry Sanders Stats Masters card without having the copyright for it or publish that as copyrighted material. Um, seems a little rough. Uh, like I said, I could see why they settled this one and didn't want to go to court. Uh, here is another example down here of a Jerry Rice. Uh, the legit, I shouldn't say the legit, the copyrighted one is on the left. Uh, the non-copyrighted one is on the right. Obviously, the images are different, but the design of the card is literally identical. <laughs> Pink and purple bars with the little bar graph on the right-hand side. The Stat Smashers logo is literally a copy-paste from one card to the other. It looks very much like it. I guess the coloring is ever so slightly different. But, so this got settled out of court, and Panini was ordered, wait for it, and you might have saw it at the top of the screen, they have to pay $25 million for this. That is not a small sum of money. Uh, the reason why it's so much, I think, is because interest got tacked on to this, I believe, and because it was 21 years after the fact... Uh, this kind of build up a little bit. It's the interest that kills you folks. At least that's the way that I understand it. Once again, uh, from, from looking over this stuff, but $25 million. I know Panini's a big company, but boy, oh boy, have they had a rough year. Things are just not going great over there in Panini world. Um, they had their offices raided. Now this uh, in addition to the NFLPA stuff, Fanatics coming at them left, right, and center. Sheesh. Uh, like I said, I don't know Panini's books, but $25 million sounds like a pretty large sum of money for any company. Maybe they settled this one because they... Who, do they have enough lawyers to handle all this? I mean, they're fighting, what, three legal cases against Fanatics at the moment. They had this pending, and now they had to cut this check. This just seems like death by a thousand paper cuts, except these paper cuts are large and in charge. So this is set to the side. We will see if this has any repercussions later on down the pipeline. We won't be able to know directly or indirectly, but... It just feels like Panini cannot catch a break and are just getting beat up all over the place. All over the place. And like I said, maybe they just settled this because one, they were probably going to lose, so you might as well save a bunch of court expenses. And you're already fighting a war on multiple fronts uh, against Fanatics and their army of attorneys in at least three other cases. Uh, you have this NFLPA thing, uh, you have the Monopoly thing, and then you have them stealing their employees thing. Those are all three separate cases that I can only imagine the billable hours that lawyers are racking up on both sides of the fence for those fights. Uh, and then you had this thing lingering out there as well. 
This was set to head to court sometime soon, and it looks like they settled it before it got there, like I said, uh, to the tune of $25 million. Whoosh. Yikes. That is a lot. What the, I keep saying it, but that is a lot of money. I don't care how big of a company you are. I feel like you are going to notice $25 million coming out of the books to pay for a lawsuit. So, uh, short video today on this Friday. Just kind of wanted to crank this one out. Keep you boys and girls in the loop like always. Uh, not sure if we're going to get a Saturday video or not. Actually, we will get a Saturday video. Marvel card box opening. Uh, I got a box of the new What If MCU set. That will be on it's coming out Saturday morning. We will have the Sunday weekly sports card market update. And I am headed to the Ship Shawana show this weekend. Uh, that show, trade night, Saturday night, show Sunday. So I will be at the trade night and I will be at the show on Sunday morning. Typically I'm there until about 11, 11.30 a.m. I usually hit it first thing in the morning, do about three or four hours of the show, snag lunch at the food truck outside and then hit the road and come home. It's about a four hour drive, give or take. And then I'll still have the holiday on Monday to relax, reset and recharge. So if you are in the Northern Indiana area, don't forget to swing out to the ship show. So. Marvel card box opening on Saturday, Sunday, weekly sports card market update might take Monday off. We shall see. I always say that. And then 17 different things happen in the hobby. We had the Lorcana PSA, all that craziness and late evenings video. I dropped that late last night or late yesterday afternoon slash evening, depending on what coast you're on. Go check that one out. If you missed it, even if you're not a big Lorcana person, a lot of wild stuff happening in the Lorcana streets. So that's all I got for you, boys and girls. We will catch you on the next one. Everybody has a fantastic holiday weekend. Oh, I almost forgot. I absolutely crushed everybody in the fantasy content creator fantasy football league this past week. Uh, I did stream that on the channel. I didn't put the recorded video up. I just hit it. Uh, you could see it over on Dustin's and Steve if you caught it live. Uh, maybe I'll give a quick rundown on my team at the very tail end of the weekly sports card market update. I know as exciting it is for all of us to talk about our fantasy teams, one of the least exciting things humanly possible is to hear someone talk about their fantasy teams. So I think I will do updates on that league uh, every Sunday on the weekly sports card market update, but I will put it at the tail end of the video. That way, if you don't care about it, once again, I, I get it if you care, I get it if you don't care. It'll be stashed away at the tail end of that video. Uh, I'll probably just go over whoever I'm playing that week and how my matchup went the week before. Week one, I play Ziggy. So I'll give you that one. We'll, we'll, I'll do a quick rundown maybe of the team and lineup and give some trash talk on the individual matchup at the end of each weekly sports card market update. So now that is all I have for you boys and girls. We will catch you on the next one. Have a fantastic weekend. Hope to see you at ships. Peace.